have come out to you my lord that am i go and from today i do not want to go back may you touch me transform me strengthen me holy go fill me to the overflow the same he the prayer of your people standing here and the those that are there we come in our lord and our god we say may you touch 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 every individual of us in the name of jesus in the name of jesus pray for the power of the holy ghost pray for the healing touch of god pray for the transformation without that there is nothing you can do lift up your voice and you begin to pray and commit yourselves into the hands of the lord say i have come i have come strengthen me strengthen me change you transform me in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, le rabakata yanda rabi, rababa baba, le rebo sakata yanda raba, inda re mama mama mama, indo rebo sanda raba, brikata yanda raba, shakata yanda raba, le re be be be, brande nakata ndo rebo shaya kata yanda raba, biri yanda le mama mama, inde rebo sayanda raba kaya, baba bana masita kando, rabori yante kapa, ramasaya katori yande le boshi kiche kapa. Rababa nebo sande nebo shita kaba bakuriande ribo zanta kaba. In Jesus' name, we are going to pray this last prayer before um, someone else come and take over. The Bible said, when the children of God are gathered together, the devil came in and for nothing but to try to steal, kill, and destroy. But this morning, we are going to say, devil, we have done that before. But today, this is the gathering of the children of God once again. You have no part here. Therefore, we kick you out in the name of Jesus. Shout, devil, I kick you out in the name of Jesus. Rabakataya, Zebaba, Nikatakatakata, Rabarabarabarabarabara. In the Leba Baba Baba Baba, Robo Sakata Yanda Naba, in the Nebo Sayanta Kabo, Devil, you have no place here this day and forever. Therefore, I am telling you, this is the gathering of the children of God. Pack your properties and luggages and go. Go, go, go. Never you come back again. In the name of Jesus, lose, lose the, the minds, lose the eyes. Lose the ears, lose the bodies in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and go, go, go. We command you, let you and your demons leave this place right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Makatu Rabashayandadaba. Holy Ghost, have your way, have your way, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Immortal God, invisible God, oh, immortal God, how great thou art. Hallelujah.
Father, we lift your name higher above all names, O God. We adore you, O God. Oh, come. Let us
A child is born today and a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders. Yes. This is the king of kings that we worship. La bandi ribi kabo zebrende yerebe. La banda ya daba kaba daba daba daba. Bende rebe kabando raba daba daba. Ya masuta kando raba. Lese keto ribi yanda ya daba daba. Katuri ageba ha zayata kaba daba. La bandi ribi kebe. La banda ya ndi ribi kabo zayanda ya daba. Masayata kato rebe rebe rebe. Le royaume Shall we please take our seats? And I want you to ponder upon this. As the wise men for many years have been yearning to see this baby be born. And they have to leave their humble abode. And travel many days, many hours to go see baby Jesus. Just ponder upon it. Today, somebody would have taken the plane, somebody would have taken. The train, the bus, they could have even driven themselves. But they walked. They trekked through the wilderness, following the light. The light that has been born to you and I. They followed until they reach the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who was and is. Our everything lying in the manger. Hallelujah. This is the king of kings that we are worshiping this morning. At this particular moment, some people have taken their gift to the gods. They've gone to pay. But we are here to serve a living God. Today, a child is born. And the son is given. Be pondering upon those words. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy.
on this earth he would have sent an engineer but because we had fallen he needed to uplift us so he sent his only begotten son and today we celebrate his birth we celebrate his birth is born unto us. The son is given. If the angels and the elders bow down before him, what are you doing? We serve in this living God. The elders and the angels bow Leba si ando rebe kabranda rabara bara Who are you that the king has to live his throne 
to come for you and give him the worship that he deserves. Open your mouth and say something to him. Open your mouth and say something to him. Who are we? Cabrando da da ba da ba, Lisota Cabandi di bi. Liba katora da 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 ba da ba. Sebrindi di bi ki bi di bi. Libo sata yanda yada ba. Liso Takato Rabadaba. You are excellent, you are mighty, you are something. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Manda Yadabadaba, Lise to Cabranda Yadaba, Mehan Didi Bike Brundo Yadabadaba, Lisa Totayan Didi Bikeba. Father, we worship you this morning, O oh God. Liba Sukoto de Bidibi and Dayadaba. Glorious one. You are our glorious God, Riman Didi Bikabranda Yadaba. Limo Sianta Yadaba Yadaba Yadaba. Before your throne,
Oh, glorious God, we bow before your throne. May your presence fill this place, oh God. May you take all that glory. Let us say, say amen. 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 Our scripture for today is taken from Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 38. I'm reading from NIV. Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 38. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you you may know the certainty of things you have been taught. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah, his wife Elizabeth who was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never, taking, he, he is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you'll be silent and not be able to speak until the day happens, until the day this happens, because you do not believe in my words, which will come true at the appointed time. Meanwhile, The people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. 
In these days, he has shown me his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin, the angel said, The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left here. This is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Okay, amen. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know? That your baby boy has walked where angels trod. When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Mary, did you? Did you know? Did you know? 
Now to give us the word of God, a man who is passionate about the move of the Holy Spirit, eschatology, and the youth ministry. Married to Mrs. Gifty Umpofo, they are blessed with a son, Prophet James Umpofo, and a daughter, Margaret Miracle Umpofo. He is a national youth executive and resident pastor of PIWC New York. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the ministry of our beloved father, Pastor Godwin Hosea Umpofo. Was that for me? <laughs> well, do a better one for Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. It is a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. And especially on this Christmas Day, where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And so, I want to give glory to God and honor him for his faithfulness that has seen all of us through the year 2022. You know, I can, I can confidently say this because 2022 is almost gone. And if God has carried me through almost 11 plus months, I'm so sure that a few days left for us to finish the year 2022, I'm definitely going to make it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is where the righteous make declarations of such nature by faith. Because the mighty hand of God is at work. And so we give him praise and glory. Uh, because this is the last Sunday of the year 2022, permit me to do a few acknowledgements before I deliver the sermon. And first one goes to the district executive members of the Church of Pentecost. Let's give it up for them. Uh, um, uh, these men and a woman are very awesome, a very beautiful team to work with. We've had our disagreements here and there, but it's always contained within the meeting. And to be honest with you, I have not had any account of where the content of our meetings have ever leaked out. Maybe my memory is playing tricks with me, but for those of you that have been part of the team, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And for that alone, I'm grateful. Hello? Let's give it up for the team. Very beautiful one. And so from the presiding elder to Elder Seth, uh, to Elder uh, Intiri, uh, to Elder Ofori, Elder Osman, and our district secretary, we want to appreciate all of you. And of course, the past executive, including Elder um, John Adai and Elder Jonathan Jato. God richly bless all of you. Amen. Now, my next thanks go to the uh, presbytery. Thank you so much. Another wonderful body. Uh, they have given us the power to be able to make day to day decisions that require the church or the leadership to meet and to reach a consensus they have given us the power their district executive to be able to do such day-to-day -day, uh, decisions and when it is necessary we meet and their contributions have been awesome uh, their inputs have been great and it's because of that that the church is moving forward as we see now 
And so all the deacons and the deaconesses and all the elders, we want to say God richly bless you. Hallelujah. You guys are awesome. Very, very beautiful. God bless you so much. Um, lastly, I want to thank every single member of the Church of Pentecost, PIWC. Let's give a round of applause to ourselves. And I'm thanking you because without you, there is no church. I mean, I can't come here and speak to tables and, and chairs. I mean, the chairs could be decorated white, but they don't have ears. They cannot clap. They don't have no beauty. They can't. They are inanimate objects. And so when you come to church, then we have a body and a family of God. And throughout the year 2022, you have been coming to church consistently. And so God bless you. Not just only your presence, but you have been also given to the church in the form of your titan offerings. And that, for that alone, the church is grateful. Because without your contribution, the church cannot run. Without your contribution, we cannot pay our bills. And over here in this building, the mortgage alone is over $12,000 every month. So can you imagine if you decide to stop paying your tax? <laughs> Hello? So, those who have been very faithful, God bless you so much. And for those who, for some reason or the other, cannot pay, maybe because you don't have a job, or maybe you're having some challenges, we pray from the bottom of our heart that the Lord will meet your need and cause you to have abundance and remain faithful to the Lord. Hallelujah. So, let's give a round of applause to ourselves. And when I talk about the church, I'm talking about all the ministry leadership as well. Very vibrant, all of them. When I go through the year, I'm looking through all the, the ministry weeks that have been done. Powerful, relevant programs that have been organized from the women to the youth. And now the children are even fighting for their ministry week. I'm wondering what they are going to do. <laughs> but they want to be included. It tells you that the church is going somewhere. Praise the Lord. And so I want to thank all of you. God richly bless you so much. You are very awesome. Today, as cold as the weather is, you could have chosen to stay home. But you are here. And I pray that the reason you came here will be met by the power of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lastly, I want to thank my wife and my family. <laughs> you know the Nigerian man will say super lolo <laughs> uh -huh, that's my wife right there <laughs> and the family my son and my, my, my daughter I mean they make my home beautiful and it makes ministry work very smooth if you have a chaotic home I mean you can't even pray mm -hmm. and so we want to thank them so much for, 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 for what God is using them to do. Uh, they are my ministry partners, you know. You know, they speak the mind of God to me. And I've learned to listen to so many voices, uh, especially the little one, Miracle. Uh -huh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So this is the acknowledgement that I want to make. I want to thank the choir, the choir, and the audiovisual team, and the instrumentalist. All of you are very awesome. Well, in fact, I'm looking forward to a fruitful 2022 uh, uh, year, hopefully. Uh -huh. We're waiting for what God will do f with us here in P 2023, excuse me, 2023. Uh -huh. uh, we're waiting for what God will do with us here in 2023. But if whatever his will, may his will be done. Hallelujah. Wonderful. So, on this Christmas day, I'm sharing with you a brief message titled, The Imagery and the Significance of Christmas. The Imagery and the Significance of Christmas. Our passages are going to be Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. We've read that over and over and over again. And then John chapter 1, 
verse 1 to 5, and then 14 to 16. We've read that also over and over again in our Christmas convention, which we finished or we completed last week. So in this sermon, I would look at three major blocks. Number one, the power of God. Number two, the new birth. Please, all the elders, come take your spot. The new birth. The new birth. And number three, choice. Number three, choice. So if you don't get anything at all from this message, at least write down these points. The power of God, the new birth. And number three, choice. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. In the beginning, the, in the, beginning, the word already existed. This is the NLT. The word was with God. And the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. Verse 3. God created everything, everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. Verse 4. The word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness can never extinguish it verse 14 to 16 so the word became human and made his home amongst us he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness and we have seen his glory the glory of the father's one and only son john testified about him when he shouted to the crowds this is the one i was talking about when i said someone is coming after me someone is coming after me who is far greater than i am for he existed long before me 16 from his abundance we have all received one gracious blessing after another hallelujah The power of God. Just last week in our Christmas convention, we're looking at Christ, our incarnate deity. The virgin conception is the theme for this season. And this virgin conception of Christ, for me, was the beginning of the incarnational process. The first imagery that The birth of Jesus Christ project is a God who is powerful enough to assume a human nature for the sake of saving the entire human race. A unique being who has the power to descend and take a human form. Now, It will be good for us to contrast this imagery with other existing competing imageries because apparently there appears to be other forms of uh, some appearances and imageries that that can uh, is competing with Christian theology when it comes to the incarnation. A good example is the Hellenistic mythology. The Greeks believe that they are gods could take a human appearance and so when you read acts chapter 4 verses excuse me acts chapter 14 verses 11 to 13 listen to what uh, was captured over there when the crowd saw what paul had done they shouted in their local dialect these men are gods in human form these men are gods in human form verse 12 they decided that Barnabas was the Greek god Zeus and that Paul was Hermes since he was the chief speaker so in their in their mindset because Barnabas perhaps was a bit calmer and unable to talk as eloquently as Paul because we know Paul's background 
Maybe he is the highest of the gods. You know, Zeus is in the, in the Greek pantheon. Zeus is supposed to be the head. So, Paul instead becomes his uh, linguist, so to speak. And so they've apportioned the roles of the gods to, to, to Paul and Barnabas. And verse 13 says, now the temple of Zeus was located outside the town. So that is what even complicated the whole story. Because not too far away was the temple of Zeus. So it makes perfect sense for them to link what was happening to these men or what was these men were doing to their gods, Zeus and Hermes. So the priest of the temple and the crowd brought bulls and wreaths of flowers to the town gates and they prepared to offer sacrifices to the apostles because in their minds they know that gods have appeared in human form. So this was the belief that was existing at the time. The secular biblical belief that the gods could appear to men and in the form of men. Now I'm not here to challenge the validity of this this doctrine that's not my motive of speaking this morning but i'm here to let you know the contrast between the thinking and what we have now in jesus christ who came in the form of man through the womb of the virgin mary none of these appearance so-called appearances from the other side matches what we have as as Christians or as, as people of God because number one the appearances of these gods were temporal and even if they happened in the first place but then when you look at Jesus he was somebody who lived for almost a little over 30 years constantly with his disciples praise the Lord they were temporal They didn't live like Jesus did. Secondly, for their kind to have a human body, according to historical account, the lesser deity supposedly came to have sexual encounters with human mothers for their offspring to possess the deity qualities. So the gods would come, pick a woman, sleep with a woman, and have a baby. And these gods, if you follow all these Greek mythology, uh, I think Hercules is one of them, supposedly. And they will have, or they will mate with human beings, and then they will create these offsprings. And these offsprings supposedly are little gods or demigods. But what we see with the account of the Holy Spirit, And what he did with Mary when he borrowed the womb of Mary. There was no such thing as sexual encounter. No such thing as sexual encounter. And yet by the power of the spirit, a seed is deposited in the womb of Mary. And a child is born. So this is different from what exists in other theology. This is the imagery we are painting to you. And and I know PIWC, you guys read. A lot of students amongst us, you will come across all some of these accounts. But when you do understand that there's a difference, praise the Lord. And no matter what you come across, it can never be the same as the original. Because the devil is also capable of mimicking what God has done. Go to the house of Pharaoh. And God sent Aaron and uh, Moses to go to the house of Pharaoh. And when Aaron laid down the staff, what did the magicians do? They also repeated it. But at the end of the day, what did the original snake do? Kabondala brashatala. So there may be some accounts that mimics what Jesus or the Holy Spirit Spirit did with Jesus. But at the end of the day, the original is the original. 
And that is the imagery we want to present to you this morning in the name of Jesus. The power to create with our carnal human knowledge is the one that we are speaking about this morning. May you receive that power in the name of Jesus. So what is the significance of this powerful virgin conception or virgin birth? Number one, it shows that Christmas is not ordinary. Hello? If you are looking beautiful, nicely dressed, then understand that you are celebrating something that is supernatural. You know, in my research, I came across a statement that Carl Bath, some of you may not know him, but you know, Carl Bath is one of the theological fathers who existed or who lived or was born in 1886. He he, according to accounts, he studied in the University of, of Berlin and later on became a reformed preacher in Switzerland. And very, very known in the context of biblical studies, this man. And he made a statement just to show you how supernaturally powerful the birth of Jesus or Christmas is. And I want to quote. The virgin birth is posted at the door of the mystery of Christmas. And none of us must think of hurrying past it. It stands on the threshold of the New Testament, blatantly supernatural, defying our rationalism, informing us that all that follows belong to the same order as itself. In other words, what this man is saying, as powerful as the, the virgin birth is, everything that follows is equally having the same quality as the supernatural. So we have something that is not ordinary. And if the virgin birth is supernatural, then let's think of a few things that is following. Your salvation, therefore, is not ordinary. Hello? Somebody had to die to save. Usually, people who save don't die. Hello? If you have a hero that is coming to save you, hardly should the hero die. Your Prince Charming must be alive. This is the, the, the uniqueness of your salvation. But this hero in the context of Christianity offered his life. And he died. Your blessing is not ordinary. Hello? It is not. Because it is as a result of the favor of God. And when that favor bestows the blessings on you, it makes you unique. To the extent that your enemies or the people that are contending with you starts to question how on earth could he or she deserve this. It makes you unique. It sets you apart. Your deliverance is also supernatural. Because it comes in the name of the Lord. It comes in the power of the Lord. The anointing of the Lord. The Bible says that a name has been given unto us. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows. Every tongue confesses that Jesus is the Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. So everything that follows, because the breath of Jesus is not ordinary. I agree with this man that everything that follows that Jesus has done for the church is not ordinary. Praise the Lord. Number two, the power behind the virgin birth speaks of God's decision concerning the human nature. And what is that decision? Very simple. By the coming of Jesus Christ, God has concluded that Humanity, the entire human race that needs saving 
is incapable of producing its own savior. Are you with me? So this is the decision God has made. By releasing Jesus, coming through the womb of Mary, he is communicating to everybody that, of course, we are the human race. We need the redemption. But that race itself is not capable of producing its own savior. And therefore, God must do something. And the thing he must do, or the savior he must provide, must come outside of that race. So the Holy Spirit himself takes on the job and brings the savior boom into the womb of Mary. What does this tell you about the human race then? It tells you that there are things that we yearn perhaps to, to, to be able to accomplish, but we are unable to do it. Hello? Let me ask this question. How many times have you not struggled with a certain particular lifestyle or a particular uh, way of life and, and you have struggled so well to break free from it but how many times don't you circle back to the same thing over and over and over again power of our own we have no power of our own we depend on you Holy Spirit, we have no power of our own. We depend on you. Holy Spirit, we have no power of our own. Thank you, choir. God bless you. So, The human nature is weak. And when it comes to spiritual redemption, there's nothing it can do. And so God had to intervene. So as you celebrate Christmas, this is the image God is projecting. This is the significance of the coming of Christ. To tell all of us that in of ourselves, we can redeem ourselves. Paul said, or summarized this, or puts it very beautifully in uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. For I know that good it itself does not dwell in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. 19. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do this. I keep on doing. When he goes, scroll downwards, read downwards, he made a conclusion, made a pronouncement on himself. What a wretched man I am. But thanks be to the coming of Jesus Christ that because of him, we have been given power to be able to succeed in this flesh. So he said in his word that abide in me and I in you. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So as you celebrate Christmas, understand that the coming of Jesus is God's gift to you to win the war over the weakness of the flesh. Praise the Lord. Because on your own, it cannot be done. No matter, no matter how, sometimes people think that, oh yeah, uh, uh, I can do this. And you listen to their words, I'm like, who are you? I can do this. I can do that. I can do that. And it's all I, 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 I. Let's continue. Number three. The display of God's power is a sign That Christ is a new beginning. The display of God's power with this conception 
and the release of Jesus Christ through the womb of Mary. It's a sign that Jesus Christ is a new beginning. You see, when God was bringing Jesus Christ to this world, he didn't modify something that was already in existence. He didn't pick a human being, and all he could have, but then the argument would be, what, what was the difference? But God in his wisdom did something that was very unique. He saw the plight of humanity and he made a divine intrusion into the plight with Jesus. And so what God did is that he is communicating to everybody that with Christ, there's a new page. With Christ, there's a new beginning. And what God has done in the history of humanity, none or nothing or nobody can replicate. New beginning. So as you're dressed and seated here, and today we are celebrating the birth of Christmas. I mean, for, for a lot of you, today is going to be a very powerful, powerful day. Only God knows what's going to happen in the bedrooms today. Hello? Well, if you're not married, please block your ears. Hello? (laughs) Some are going to celebrate, take their spouses out. I mean, the homes is going to be so beautiful. In fact, it makes me miss Ghana. On this particular day when I was growing up, In fact, that that is when chicken suffers a lot. (laughs) And goats. Every, I mean, everybody would wait for this day. But it is not about the celebration. It is about what God is giving to mankind. And God through Jesus has given humanity a new beginning. And therefore if you are seated here, I want you to accept that by faith. That with, with, with the coming of Jesus, who now sits inside of, inside of me, I have a new beginning. Life might be tough, but that a new beginning is coming. My challenges might be there. But I have a new beginning. If you receive that word, it will work for you. Praise the Lord. Because through Jesus, God has demonstrated that his promises are yea and amen. And he's capable of fulfilling his own promises. What did he not say through the prophet Isaiah that we read? Unto us a child is born, a son is given. That was, that was thousands of years ago. And in the time of the New Testament, it came to pass. May every promise God has made concerning your life come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be given new beginning in the name of Jesus. Christ. In the coming year, receive the grace to begin anew. In your marriages, receive a new beginning. In your academic life, receive a new beginning. In your, in your finances, receive a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. New birth. You know, there are so many subconscious or subliminal messages in Christmas. So we just now finished talking about new beginning. We already know that who made the, the coming of Jesus Christ possible is the Holy Spirit. But for me, what the Holy Spirit did physically with Jesus speaks of or speaks to me of 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 what he was going to do spiritually for humanity through jesus let me take that again when i look at the virgin conception and how the holy spirit by his own omnipotent power is able to bring jesus who is pre-existent According to John chapter 1, you remember the scripture, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. 
That power of the spirit to be able to bring Jesus to life through the womb of Mary for humans to touch, others even touching the hem of his garment and getting healing and all that kind of stuff. For that to be accomplished, it's a revelation to me of what the spirit of God was also going to do for the entire humanity. Amen. What did he do? Well, we read that in, the the beautiful lady read that in Luke chapter 1 verse 35 where we know that Jesus Christ was conceived. But the most important question to ask is what does this act of the Holy Spirit tell us about his operations? We see the power of the Spirit as responsible for bringing life. When he took over the womb of Mary, And listen to what the angel said in Luke chapter 1 verse 35. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Last week we heard about the Son of God, so that's not where I'm going. But pay attention. The Holy One to be born. The Holy One to be born. And the person doing the conception is the Holy Spirit. What does that tell you? That if the Spirit of God is involved in anything, and in this context, the conception of Jesus Christ, the outcome of that activity is holy. holy so the holy one to be born because the holy spirit is involved so when the spirit of god is upon you you qualify to be holy when the spirit of the lord is is, has ordained, has infused his power into something or somebody, that person now takes the title holy. So our holiness is not because of what we can do, but it is because of what the Holy Spirit's power is able to make us. That is why we are sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Hello? So from today, if you are if, if you're looking at Jesus and celebrating the, the birth of Jesus Christ, understand that what the Holy Spirit did is a revelation of what he's doing now with us. Amen. But that is not that alone. Let's continue. So, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So then, your answer, if for those of you who ask the question, well, how could Jesus be human and not sinful when Mary's nature is the Adamic type? You're forgetting who it is that is at work. Hello? Mm -hmm. You're forgetting who it is that is at work. When the Spirit of God is at work, the outcome is always holy. Hallelujah. Number two, the Spirit of God is also capable of bringing about life. With Jesus, there was a human being that was produced and at the same time God. But guess what? When we read John or when we quoted John chapter 1, we realized that Jesus already existed. So, hey, the, the, the spirit of God was able to bring that which was pre-existent into reality. And when you talk of pre-existence, you're talking about eternality or something that is eternal. So the spirit of God does not just only produce life, but he also produces eternal life because the one that he brought out was the eternal son of God. 
See, so the, the concept of Christmas is deep. If you are celebrating Christmas, you need to take your time and understand what God was doing. Hallelujah. Listen to the words of Jesus himself. Talking about the spirit of God who is able to produce life. John chapter 3 verse 3. I'll skip the 4 and read 5 and 6. Jesus replied. Very truly I tell you. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Skip the 4. 5. Jesus answered. Very truly I tell you. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. And then when you go to chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus emphasized again saying, it is the spirit who gives life. Do we have it on screen? John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Life giver. The Holy Spirit. So what he did with Jesus is casting a shadow of what he is going to do for believers. And this is what Jesus is saying when he had a dialogue with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And he's saying that I mean, that the Bible didn't say it, but I'm, 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 I'm just kind of interpreting and paraphrasing that if the Spirit of God brought me into existence and the kingdom is mine and the government is on my shoulders, then if you want to see the kingdom, if you want to enter the kingdom, you must go through the same process the Holy Spirit did with me. Be born again. That's not what the, spiritual, the scripture is saying. I am linking it and making that meaning. Because the kingdom is his. And he has authority to accept anybody who wants to come in. But then you need to go through the birth of the Holy Spirit. And this is the giver of life. No, and that, if you are a, a, a Bible student, then the question you're going to be asking yourself is, okay, well, fine. If this is the case, then how do we reconcile what Jesus said? If Jesus himself is saying that the spirit is the one that gives life, then how do we reconcile what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 27, 28, where he said, that, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, they follow me, blah, blah, blah. And when you go to 28, it says that I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. So who is who here? If the spirit is giving life, then Jesus is also saying, I give life. Then isn't this a contradiction? Of course not. Because what Jesus is saying is he is painting a broader picture. And what broader picture is he saying? What he's saying is that he, as the son of the living God, is the source of life. And the only reason why you come or you become or you receive eternal life is to place your faith in him. In fact, John chapter 1 First John chapter 5 verse 11 and 12 says that. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And listen to this. And this life is in the son. So Jesus wouldn't be wrong in saying that I give eternal life. Because the life is in me. And by his death, what he is communicating to the entire world. that This life has already been offered for anybody who plays faith in me. So Jesus is accurate. He is the source of eternal life. He is the, he is the, uh, uh, the, the originator of eternal life. But guess what? For you to be able to say and claim that I have eternal life. Something must happen, right? You need to have placed faith in Jesus Christ. 
guess who does that job of leading you to place your faith in Christ Jesus? The Holy Spirit. And what does he do? He brings about a conviction. So you realize that what you're doing is wrong. And then he pricks your heart for you to have a repentant mind. Now, once that is done and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the Holy Spirit now takes the life in Christ and makes it applicable to you. That is what he does. So, they work hand in hand. And so, Jesus again is accurate when he's saying that it is the Spirit who gives life. Hello. And once you are done with saying, I accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, the Spirit of God immediately completes the rebirth. And in the sight of the Lord, you are born again. So, if Jesus was born through the Holy Spirit, then this is what, after Jesus has completed his work on the cross, the Spirit of God is also doing for humanity. Hallelujah. As you celebrate Jesus, understand that if you have him in your life, you have received new birth in the name of Jesus. Now, if you have received new birth, then what must you do going forward. There comes a responsibility and a blessing at the same time with the new birth. Romans chapter 8 verses 12 to 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you give or if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live or if you But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. This is the responsibility. So new birth comes with new life and new activity. And that new activity is say no to the flesh are you with me say no to the flesh and what are the deeds of the flesh I mean we know all of them can can we start to list them (laughs) all right I, I, I don't want you to put yourself in trouble here the deeds of the flesh so the regeneration that you have received comes with the responsibility and the responsibility is when this Adamic nature that has been rebirthed, rejuvenated we reborn through the action of the spirit of God wants to dictate for you, tell him that you know what I don't take instructions from you anymore I take instructions from the one who gave me this condition, this new life The Bible says that if somebody is in Christ, it's a new creation. The old is gone. Look, in the coming year, the flesh is going to tell you a lot of stuff. Hello? And he will not stop bothering you until you go to the grave. He's not going to stop. I can assure you that. Sometimes you think all of us we are tongues blowing Christians, the flesh don't speak. Oh boy, cry. <laughs> the flesh speaks. But we are in constant battle with the flesh. And this war is won because we have the Holy Spirit. And so as we desire to yield to the directions of the Spirit, that is how we contain the flesh. Remember that on your own, you can't defeat this flesh. You cannot defeat because the flesh was there before the Holy Spirit got into it. (laughs) 
until you receive the Holy uh, until you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit was not inside of you. It is that when you it's when you place faith in Christ Jesus, that's when the Spirit of God first of all came to indwell you. And if you did experience the subsequent experience with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then of course the power of the Spirit has submerged on has you know overshadowed you. Yes. But until that time, the flesh was there. You slept with the flesh. You walk with the flesh. In fact, when I look at women and how they polish the flesh, <laughs> I'm not picking on you, ladies. I mean, you guys are beautiful. <laughs> you guys are beautiful. But no matter what the mirror tells the woman, (laughs) praise the Lord. It is all good. It is all good. We all do take care of our flesh. I don't mean to pick on you. But I'm telling you that the amount of time we spend on the flesh, if we can give 50% and over to the Holy Spirit, we will be spiritually advanced like we are more than we are now. I mean, be honest with yourself. Just coming to church this morning. What was the minutes you spent in the mirror making sure you look? I mean, just don't answer me, the pastor. Just be honest with yourself and tell your spirit. There's a particular dress you wanted to wear. Maybe you couldn't find it. Hello? You, you, you couldn't find it. So, you, you, you don't like the alternative. The flesh tells you that this one uh, is what you need to wear. So, you start to flip. You start to flip. You start to flip. Okay, so you find the dress. There's a particular shoe that must match the dress. Maybe one of them is behind the refrigerator. You <laughs> You didn't know. The flesh says, no, 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 no. Don't take this one. This one is good. So you started to look and look and look and look and look until you saw it behind the refrigerator. Look, you have no idea how dangerous the flesh is. Meanwhile, the spirit of God perhaps might have told you that, my son, you are getting late to church. Why don't you take the alternative with the flesh? Ah, You won't look good in this one. The flesh. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the coming year, that the dictates of the flesh will be minimal and the Holy Spirit will take over. The Bible says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. The blessings that follow, Paul listed them in the verse. Um, 15 to 17 the spirit who the spirit you receive does not make you slaves this is now the blessing we've looked at the responsibility so that you live in fear rather the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship by him you cry abba father so it's giving you the right to call god your father Irrespective of what the world says, God is your father. And then the Bible says, or Paul continues to say that, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So when the enemy comes whispering to you and questioning your position in Christ and in the family of God, tell him to go ask the Holy Spirit. Because the person that bears testimony with our spirit is the Holy Ghost. Anytime you receive that doubt in your mind that you are not a child of God, tell him, devil, you have anything, go deal with the Holy Spirit. Because he's my testimony. Amen. Verse 17, now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed We share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. There's a glory that is coming. And because we're led by the spirit of God, 
we are part of that glory. I want to conclude by looking at choice. By the birth of Christ, God was, and is in fact, has presented the world with a choice. The choice is very simple. It is Jesus or the world. It is heaven or hell. There are no in-betweens. The minute God brought Jesus to the world, God has given the world a choice. And everybody a choice. And that choice is my son or no relationship with me. My son or you don't have a place with me. Where earlier on through certain people like Abraham and certain covenants and all that, people could come closer to God because he chose Abraham now. No, 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 it's not about Abraham, it's about Jesus. You either have him or forget about having a connection with me. And his word has made it clear. Hebrews chapter 1, when you read it down there, it says that in the olden days I spoke to you guys in through prophets and so on. But now, in the last days, I have spoken to you through my son. Amen. You know, the issue with our world today is that they do not consider spiritual things as important. When talk about Jesus, the world wants to shut you off. Even in Christmas, as we celebrate Christmas, a lot of people don't, are so offended to mention Christmas because Christ begins. So offended. And to not even, to make matters worse and to not be tempted to say Christmas, it's now happy holiday. I was glad when First Lady was doing a a program on her show and she was given as the history behind the word holy days, which which has a, a Christian origin, which meant holy days. Because when people were celebrating those days, it was the feasts of Pentecost, the feast of this, those uh, Easter, Sunday, and all that. So the people saw all those things and the, uh, their activity in the temple and gave it the name Holy, not the L, but the Y, Holy, as in Holy Ghost. Holy Days. And now in our time, we say Holy Day. Yes, the the Y has been changed to I. But the root of that word is because we commemorate and we remember these days and festivals that God in his wisdom has given to men. So they are running from Christ, but they have fallen into another concept of Christian origin. I wonder what they are going to say if they discover that holy days or holy days is now is coming from holy days. Maybe vacation. I don't know. Amen. So the world does not prioritize spiritual things anymore. And this is an example that I'm giving you. On the scale of preference, issues to do with eternal life, you know, spirituality, connection to God, and so on and so forth, is way at the bottom, even in fact, if it happens to be on the list at all. Now, let me say this quickly and then we'll, end, we'll enter into a minute of prayer. I was list, when I was researching, as I was preparing for the sermon, I, I came across uh, this message uh, or this, this statement. Uh, it's the autobiography of the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. A lot of people know him. He's a, he's a black conservative justice on the supreme. He's alive. He's, oh, good. Thank you. This man, this man right here. That's the person I'm talking about. And 
He is known to have raised or he has been raised as a Catholic. I want you to pay attention. And he attended the Holy Cross College in Worcester. Now, if you read his memoir titled, My Grandfather's Son, a Memoir, listen to what he said. He says that during my second week on campus, I went to mass for the first time and the last time at the Holy Cross. So the very day he entered into church on that campus was his first and his last. <laughs> All right. And he said, that, I don't know why I bought it. I'm quoting still. Probably habit or guilt. But whatever the reasons, I got up and walked out midway through the homily. Homily is just, just like a sermon, even as I'm speaking to you. So midway through the sermon, perhaps when I was talking about uh, the Holy Spirit's power, he, he was gone. Listen to what follows. I'm still quoting. It was all about church dogma. Not the social problems with which I was so obsessed and seemed and it seemed to me hopelessly irrelevant. Contemporary judge. So when he was in college, and this is what our people go through on co- in colleges. And you wonder why they go to college, they come back home, and they don't want to have anything to do with the church. Now, for those of us in PRWC, we are going to pray, we are going to stand in for our children, and as long as, when they go to college, whatever force that operates over there, they will be insulated by the power of the Spirit of God. So he attended mass and midway through it, he left. Why? Because what the preacher was preaching was not what he is obsessed with. And what is he obsessed with? Maybe racism, maybe uh, inflation that is going up, maybe uh, 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 global warming. You name all those social challenges that are in the system right now. That was his concern. So he expected the preacher. To be led by the Holy Ghost. To preach upon these things. And because it did not address these things which was his priority. Midway through the sermon, he got up and he left. And this is what the world expects of preachers like myself. You stand here, what comes out of here should be something that is pleasing to the eye to the eye and the ear. Something you want to hear that makes you feel good. Oh yeah, he talked about global warming. Okay, this preacher is contemporary. I'm going to stay. He talked about racism. Oh yeah, yeah, he's addressing contemporary issues. But guess what? The world is wrong if all these issues are priority for them because then it it does not recognize the relevance of what Jesus was saying about the regeneration because when man is regenerated, majority of these social problems will solve themselves. It is the fallen nature of man that is making us realize all these things. Now, tell me where was, where, where was racism when Adam and Eve were in the garden? Hello? So the world is wrong. What they need is Jesus. Hello? Yes, these things are very important and they are life and death, but to me, they are temporal. If you find a solution to global warming, maybe it's temporal. Because as long as China keeps producing, the ozone layer would always mess up. And the rays from the sun, scientists, please correct me if I'm wrong, this is my little knowledge I have about the ozone layer. Pollution in the atmosphere. As long as there are bombs flying left and right. 
social and human suffering isn't going anywhere. So Jesus says that these things you would have with you all the time. Poverty is one of them. So they are not the important things. And tell me, if somebody is dead and is in the grave, what has it got to do with global warming? What has racism got to do with those who are in the casket? Hello? I am not by any means saying they are not important, but they are not the most important. The most important is regeneration and rebirth. As we celebrate Christmas, I came to present Jesus to you. That a choice has been given unto us. If we would accept him and allow him to give us the new birth through the power of the spirit. Majority of these things will be gone. Amen. Amen. So when we stand here to minister, we speak that which is necessary. The Bible says it's appointed unto death to die, man to die once. And after death, there is judgment. In the grave, life will continue. According to the account of the rich man and Lazarus, life would continue. But if you have been born of the spirit and Christ lives inside of you, you will leave all those temporary global warming poverty, inflation stuff aside and your regeneration will take you to the next level. To me, that's the most important. Because you can have temporal relief here on earth. But have you thought about relief in eternity? Hello? So, with this Christmas, when Jesus came, God was giving the world a choice. It is this choice that I present to you. In everything that you do, do you have a relationship with the Jesus? Don't be so concerned about things that are temporal, but things that endure can stand the test of time. Yes, our jobs are necessary, because they pay the bills. Our schooling is necessary because they help us to be able to get the jobs. Everything you're doing right now to make ends meet is all necessary, but they are temporal. At the end of the day, your qualification will not follow you to the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, I'm not going to be called Pastor Ampofu. I'm sorry. It's just a title here. As powerful as Abraham was in heaven, did you hear Jesus say the patriarch Abraham? He said Abraham. That is the name that is written in the Lamb's book of life. They don't add titles to it. So if it's at the entry in the Lamb's book of life, the elder it vanishes. You will hear Michael in three. I'm not saying your idea is not relevant. <laughs> Amen. The title is not part of the names in there. Because what are titles when the king of glory himself is seated? The Bible says that the 24 elders themselves, because the ultimate crown is on his head, they put theirs down. And all they say is holy, holy, holy. Now, the 24 elders cried on out to form. Who are you to bring your ego and your title to his presence? Bible says that he's enthroned between the cherubim. I'm telling you all this for you to know that there are things that are more important than what we preoccupy ourselves with. I'm not saying that God gives you the chance. Don't change your environment. No, that's not what I'm saying. But as you do that, 
remember that one day we will all stand in the judgment seat of Christ and we'll give account of what we did with this body. That is why Jesus came. So we will have a choice. Stand to your feet. Lift a prayer. Shabadabahanda. Rebekonde son telebre hendea. Break it all, see cabra, shoba lebelebe handelebre. Zabadabada, shandelebre, suquanta la bracaba. Rabababa bonde lebre, sis catabros, kelebre capa. Librinde le moshe de yanda la baha santa la baba handa. Mama nanda lebre, shkadabra santa la 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 baba. Rakabada la baba shabada la baba brapa la 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 baba. Rakatunde le lebre shada la 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 baba baba baba. Rakababa baba shata da 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 baba rasata la baba. We bless your name. We bless your name in the name of Jesus. Rasota seke bre sabonde lebeha. Ribikando la mahanda la rasu katanda la ba. Shebere ribi anda la la bosa ta da 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 brakaba. Rabada ya ba shabada la 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 ba 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 ba. Rakaba ba 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 shada da da ba ba. Makabra ba ba ba. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, I worship your holy name, hallelujah, I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never, sing like never before. To worship the Lord, begin to worship the Lord, begin to worship the Lord. Rasha bala 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 Rahanda la 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 bosha ba ba kabra santa la la ba ba rabe shebe kele le 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 bebe rakaba santa la 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 ba ba rakaba shabada ba hande le le bre rita zosa hande le le bianda la la ba ba shabada ba 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 la 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 ba ba siwata la 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 ba ba rebe de shabada ba 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 that if there are things that are challenges for us except his divine intrusion and divine power we will struggle and struggle and struggle with it but when he comes into the equation so mary's mother told the people that whatever he tells you do it he's able to change shame into glory he's able to take poverty into rich riches i mean you think about it but we are praying in the name of jesus lord that if we are struggling with anything even as Jesus has been offered to the world by the supernatural power of God may we have the ability to overcome Amen
Lift your voice and let's pray. We stand in the presence, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And you have given us so God the solution to apply. And that solution is Jesus Christ, oh God. Therefore, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Our prayer this morning as a church, Lord, anything that we are struggling with, especially the flesh, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. The Spirit of our loving God, you will help us overcome the flesh in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know us, Lord. If there are any weaknesses in our system that we don't have the power to overcome, we pray, oh God, we seek in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, moving now, make my life whole again. Spirit, move over me. Spirit move, spirit move. In the name of Jesus, la kabasha ba ba ba. 
We want to pray for new beginnings. We're praying. Maybe you need God to change some stuff in your life. You want God to turn over a new page in your life. Maybe you are at a crossroads. You don't know which way to go. The word of the Lord has come to you. That with what God has done through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's capable of giving you a new beginning. And therefore we're praying. In the name of Jesus. That Lord I'm depending on you. For this new page to be turned in my life. I'm depending on you for this new beginning. I can't do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. I'm seeking your power, your direction. Why don't you lift your voice up? Why don't you lift your voice up? In the name of Jesus. Rashaba. Redeshodabaha. Lasata manima. Libidia cabro shaba. Rabido si santa limo. Mania cabro jebediba. Rakata la balaba siandaba. Rabi yakaba la bashova de ria. La bracaba rasata la lava. Rakaba bashava da badaba da baba. Rebidia. how sweet the name of Jesus in a believer's year. He soothes his souls, heals his wounds, and drives away. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's year. He soothes his soul, heals his wounds, and drives his On this day that Jesus has been presented to the world I want to give anybody in this room the chance if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ to raise up your hand wherever you are and Christ will come inside of you if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus this is your opportunity because God presented Jesus for a reason for you to have a new beginning with him reconciliation with him wherever you are can you raise your hand we'll pray with you it soothes his sorrow 
We give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you for giving us the meaning, the picture, and the significance of Christmas. Thank you for pointing our attention, O oh God, to so many dimensions of the reasons for bringing your son into this world. On this day, as we celebrate Jesus, we pray that the King of glory will be exalted in our lives, Lord. We pray, O oh God, that every challenge that we face, O oh God, by his power, we would overcome. Because he that lives inside of us is greater than he that is outside. You've come to exhort us in your word that on our own we cannot make it. And therefore we seek the face of Christ Jesus our Savior. We seek the power of the Holy Spirit Lord to help us overcome the flesh and live righteously for you. Because when you descend or you return for the second time, you're coming for the righteous. And we know our righteousness is not of ourselves, but it's of Christ Jesus. And therefore we pray in the name of Jesus that our lives of God would bring you glory. That because of us, the world will revere you. And because of us, the world will give you glory. We thank you for what you have done for us this season, Lord. It is priceless. It, we cannot value it. But we say thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Because we have him, we're confident, oh God, that we've made the right choice. And that we have a place with you, Lord. We honor you and we bless your holy name. We pray that your heart, oh, uh, our hearts, oh God, will be a place, Lord. That this word will find a fertile place or we'll find a comfortable place Lord and birth fruit for others also to benefit from may your holy name be praised in Jesus name Amen Amen Hallelujah No it's always just the same praise his holy name that's the reason why i love him so jesus is the sweetest name i know please sing with me jesus is the sweetest name i know It's always just the same. Oh, praise His holy name. For that's the reason why I love Him so. I love Him so. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Singing Jesus. Jesus is the sweetest. Jesus, precious, precious Jesus. I love your name. I love your name. I love your name. I love your name. Jesus, Jesus, precious, precious Jesus. I love your 
precious, precious Jesus. There is no other name. One more time, precious Jesus. Jesus, precious Jesus. I love the name. What a son given to humanity. A high priest in the order of Melchizedek. A God who is no far away from us. You left your lofty dwelling, O oh God. To be born in a manger, making yourself accessible even to shepherds. We who were so far away, O oh God, because you became the incarnated deity in our midst. You granted us access to come, O oh God. You've opened the door for us. And even in your word to us today, you've given us a choice for eternal life. We want to thank you for the privilege that you came for us. And by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, you have sanctified us, O oh God. You have given us a new birth, O oh God. Therefore, you have given us the power it takes to be overcomers. You have given us the power to receive sonship. You have given us the power to cry out, oh Father, because of your appearing, oh God, you have caused us to receive life because you are spirit. And in your spirit, we have risen to a new level. We want to thank you today for the revelation you have given us. You have shown us the mythology of the world, but you have shown us that with you, we have touched the supernatural. Therefore, we are leaving this sanctuary as the children who have the power of the Holy Spirit. We are not walking this earth without power. Therefore, in our jobs, let us excel. In our academics, let us excel. In our marriages, let us excel. In rearing our children as parents, let us excel. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is upon us. We want to thank you that even in this message, oh God, we have received the divine, oh God, because of the Holy Spirit who has birthed in us your grace. We are living, oh God, acknowledging that we have been given a new beginning. And in this new beginning, there is no inferiority. In this new beginning, there is no sickness. In this new beginning, there is no weakness. In this new beginning, we reject poverty. We claim healing and wholeness because we claim our position as the children of the most high God, the God who is the creator, the one who is able to do that which is impossible, able to birth in the womb of human by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, we stand upon this word and decree in Jesus' name. If there is any agenda of the enemy, we rebuke in Jesus' name. If there's any challenge, because we have received power, we have so higher. We thank you. For this word. We thank you for the vessel that ministered. We thank you for all of us who have listened to this word. That in the mirror of your word, our eyes will be enlightened to understand that we are not ordinary people. Therefore, we will not cower in this life. Therefore, we will not shirk, oh God, in this life. Therefore, we will not be stunted in this life. But because you have given us abundant life, we will triumph. Our children will triumph. Our generations will triumph. We want to thank you that it's not only about this life. But because of your word, our names are in the book of life. And when we stand before your judgment seat, as you have spoken to us, we will hear in our ears, well done, good and faithful servant. Hell is not our dwelling. Because as the wise, as you have given us this choice, in the name of Jesus, we accept life and eternal life. Therefore, we are living under your unction, under your power, under your grace, under your victory, under your glory. That is how we are living. As the year is coming to an end, and because of the power of the Holy Spirit, we blind the eye of the adversary concerning us. 
Every spirit of death we rebuke in Jesus' name. Every bloodthirsty spirit will not touch us, will not come near us, not by our power, but because of your spirit. Our children are secure. Our husbands are secure. Our families are secure because your power is upon us. We want to thank you that all of us who come here to testify that you have given us a new beginning in 2023. Our lives will rise from one level to the other because your word has touched this ground. And we receive it and say amen to it. We bless you for your church. We honor you for your grace. And we honor you for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Shall we receive the benediction? May God who has called you by the Holy Spirit empower you to shine for him wherever you are. To give glory to him so that the world will know that you have been with him. God empower you. And remove every obstacle from your way. So that you will be here on 31st. Amen. So that we will be here early on the 1st of January. Amen. 2023. Amen. To worship him. To fellowship with him. God empower you. May he bless you. And make his face shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And give you his peace. Amen. Amen.